I'm remaking the building guide because there's a story contest going on right now, so what new? The minor difficulty spikes you find in your towers aren't as minor as you think. People often forget how frustrating it is to fail the same jump repeatedly. If you find a jump that feels out of your tower's difficulty range you need to nerf it as soon as possible. And whatever you do, don't change the difficulty of your tower. It's been done before and it didn't turn out too well. If you really want to stop making a tower of a specific difficulty then you can probably just start a new tower. People often build towers way out of their own difficulty range. If your hardest tower is challenging, I strongly advise you not to build a soul-crushing tower. I'd recommend adding a difficulty to your hardest tower and making that the limit for your building. People also build towers that are much easier than their hardest tower. It's nowhere near as big of a problem as building towers harder than your range, but it's still not recommended because the game isn't accepting many easy-to-hard towers anymore. Surprisingly enough, modern towers do this much more than classic ones. I've seen many towers with really good design and creativity, but really bad enjoyability because of the poor indication. I made a Silent Abyss steeple ranking video, and put Steeple of Wicked Grotto in 7th place with a total of 20 out of 30 points when it could have easily gotten 23. People usually tell beginners to play whitelist towers and get inspiration from them, but instead they copy a few jumps they liked while going through the towers. This is bad because towers are reviewed and whitelisted by the same people, so it will be pretty obvious to them that you copied a tower they've gone through before. Instead, you can take a few jumps you liked, pick one of them and improve it or make it feel more like your own. The only way to avoid repetition is to continue building without looking at things you've previously built in the tower. People think it's okay to copy and paste platforms if they're multiple floors apart, but it's very obvious when you do it. If you're only looking to improve at building then you probably shouldn't copy ideas from your older towers. But if you want to submit it I'd recommend copying as many creative sections you find in your old towers as you can. Many towers lack client objects, but it's highly recommended to start using them because of the limitations of purism. Some of the best client objects to use are fading platforms, spinners, keys, morphers, and swings. It might take some time to learn how keys, morphers and swings work but once you learn them your towers will get much better. Many beginners use a really small variety of parts, many of them think using blocks and wedges is enough to be considered good part variety. Because of this, they don't know how to use cylinders, balls, or corner wedges for design. Many people think more colors result in a better looking tower, but if you look at Tower of Astral Eclipse that is definitely not the case. Two colors is usually the number you want to go for because it looks much better than three or more but if you really want to use more than two please only use three. Modern towers normally use bright and less saturated colors while older towers use dark saturated ones. You can still use darker saturated colors but you should probably make them very dark. The only thing I would advise you not to do is using bright saturated colors. I don't think I need to explain this any further. I told you not to take too much inspiration from other towers because it can be labeled as copying, but that only applies for creativity. For design, you want to look at how others design their towers and combine and improve them. But I'd recommend making a few jumps and designing them as much as you can with as little parts as possible to create your own design style. If we reach 500 subscribers in August, I'll make a video about it so subscribe right now.